Hey, this is Joe from SoFly, and in this video, we are going to import WordPress users from a CSV using WP All Import. So to get started, we'll go down here to All Import and select New Import. And then we have three options. We have Upload File, Download File, and Use Existing File. They're pretty self-explanatory. In this case, I'm going to upload a file. I'm going to select my CSV right here. We can check it out real quick. And there it is. So it's just pretty simple, straightforward CSV. It has their first name, last name, job title, the company, email address, the date they registered, and their LinkedIn profile. So we'll select that. And now we have two options. We have new items, which is selected by default, and then we have existing items. So the difference here is, let's say I had, you know, my existing users on the site, and I wanted to set this import up, and it's going to potentially update the existing users on the site, right? So in this case, I'm going to leave the default new items selected and, you know, I don't have any users on my site. So I just want to import this file and create all of the new users from that file. So we have new items over here and then we're going to create new and we're going to select post the, and we're going to select from the pull down users. So we're going to create new users for each record in my data file. And that's all set up. So now we'll continue to step two. Now here on this page, we just kind of want to make sure that WPL import has properly selected the uh, delimiter, right? Um, so it's you know, properly rendering the file. We can see here, you know, these are all my columns. And then these are this is all the data for this one record. And, you know, I can cycle through and I can look at the different records. We're good to go. And then down here, I have some filtering options. So let's say I just wanted to import, you know, all of the users that work at DAB feed or something like that. Um, you know, are all the users registered after a certain date? or, you know, pretty much whatever, right? So I can filter by any of the data that's in my file. Then I can create rules, you know, like equals or not equals, and then the value, and then I can create multiple rules and separate them with and or operators. So I could, you know, import only the people who work at Google and Facebook or something like this, whatever you need to do. Now we're not gonna cover it in this video. We have plenty of documentation and plenty of other videos on our YouTube channel that go into filtering options in more detail. So we're just gonna leave that blank and we'll continue to step three. All right, now here on the left, this is our import template, all the settings for our import, and this is how we set it up. This is where we set up all the user data. Then here on the right, this is all the data in my file that I can drag and drop. So you can see here, again, these are all the columns, and this is all the data for the first record, and that's the second record, and the third record, etc. So let's drag and drop. So we're gonna put our first name over here. So we're gonna select this, and we'll just drag it over and we'll drag over our last name. And then we have our login. And this is the string that contains the user's name for logging in. So this is their username, right? So what do I want their username to be? Let's just make it their first name and their last name, just like that, right? And we can make it, you know, if we wanted to make it something else, we could make it something else, but I'm gonna go with this. And then we have our email address. So drag over our email. And we're good to go. Now here we have our password information. Now the way this works is I, you know, I don't have any password data in my import file. You know, obviously I wouldn't really, wouldn't be a great idea to have like their, um, like the password stored in cleared text over there. But you know, there's some cases where you might want to do that. For example, if you just wanted to use a dummy password, you know, like I could just tell them, could just set this here to password. And then I could just tell the users, Hey, your login name is you know, your, your password for the new site is password, please change it, something like that. There's probably more intelligent ways to do that. Um, there's a lot of plugins out there that do, uh, that allow you to customize the welcome email, um, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave this blank. If, you know, if we were migrating users from a different WordPress site um, using WPL export, then we can actually export the password hashed, right? So it's a hash of the password, it's not the actual password in clear text. In this case, we're going to leave this blank. If you want to learn more about importing user passwords, check out our documentation, check out our YouTube channel. We have a lot of information on that. Um, okay, so that's the user account info set up. And then down here, we have other user info, like the user role. Now, by default, the user role is going to be subscriber. Um, I could type in, you know, for example, editor or, you know, the, the user role slug for any user role on the site if I've added a customized one. If these users are going to have different roles, you know, depending on data in the import file, you know, maybe I would have a column over here with the user role. Then I would just drag that over. In this case, we're going to leave it blank. 
All these folks are subscribers. Next, we have the nickname. This just defaults to the person's username. So we're going to leave that as is, right? So the nickname is just going to be up here. Now, the display name also defaults to the username, um, but I want it to be a little bit nicer. So I'm going to put the first name over here and then also their last name, right? With a nice little space in between them. Oops. We'll put that in front. There we go. And you know what? That's pretty nice. Let's use that for their nickname as well. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, and then their description. Now, this is the biographical information for the users. Um, so what I could do is, you know, I could just kind of put whatever I wanted to based on the data over here. You know, I have the job title and then I have the company. So I could just put job title at and then the company over here. Um, I can put, you know, pretty much whatever I wanted. Um, and then register date. Format for the register date is year month date. And conveniently, my register date over here is also year month date. So we'll drag that over. If I left this blank, it's just going to be the, uh, the date that I ran this import. Um, so yeah. And then the nice name. The nice name um, is a string that contains the URL friendly name for the user. And the default is just going to be the user's username. So we can just leave that as the default. URL, totally optional field, but I happen to have a URL in my file over here, which is their LinkedIn URL, a URL to their LinkedIn profile. So we'll put that over here. And then we have custom fields. Now I've set up some custom fields over here with ACF, right? Advanced custom fields. And we can check those out. And you can see over here, I have the company and the job title added as custom fields for all my administrators and subscribers. So if we go in here with WPL input, we can auto detect the fields. And then down here, I have my company and my job title. Now, all of this other stuff is just kind of standard WordPress things that we don't really want to import. So I'm going to delete all of these, right? Don't want to import these custom fields. We'll leave those blank, but we're going to import company and job title. So I'm going to delete the default value here that WPL import detected. And I'm going to drag in my company over there and then my job title, just like that, right? And if I wanted to, you know, I could just add a custom field. And then over here, and you, know, you type in the slug, so my field, and then I could drag in, you know, whatever data I wanted to, just like that. And WPL import will import that data into WordPress, right? But we would still need some way to see those fields on the user table, like in the, in the, when we view the user and then we, you know, so that's why I used advanced custom fields. So we can actually just see it pretty easily without any other custom code. And we'll get back to that after the import. We'll check those out. Okay. So I have my company and my job title. And then down here, I have the function editor. So if I wanted to, I could pass any of this data through a custom PHP function, and I could write that function over here. Then that way, you know, we're passing that data through custom PHP, and I'm just writing the PHP and then, you know, passing the data through right here in the import template. Um, we have a lot of documentation on our site about this. We have a ton of code snippets. Uh, check out our site. We have YouTube videos on it. Check out our YouTube channel. If you're curious about custom functions, check those out. A lot of powerful stuff you can do there. All right, so next let's continue to step four. Right, okay, and then over here we have our unique identifier. So what we're going to do is auto detect the unique identifier and that has selected the first name and the last name. So what that means is, you know, when this import's running, for example, if two people have the same first name and last name, then WPL import's gonna think that they're the same person, the same user, and it's gonna overwrite that information that's already been created in this import. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that this information here is a unique representation of each and every record, right? And then when we, if we were to rerun the import later, this unique identifier is going to be how it determines if the data in our file matches the user. It's going to look at the first name and the last name. So I can make this a little bit different if I want to. For example, instead of first name and last name, because sometimes people you don't know, have the same name, but they don't generally have the same email address. So I'm just going to put an email address there to be safe. Um, if WPL import selects something, it's generally correct pretty much all the time. So that tells me that in this file, we always have the same first, you know, all these users have different first names and last names. Um, but for me, I think that, you know, email is probably a safer bet. So I'm going to put an email up there for the unique identifier. And then down here, we have some settings here for recurring imports. So a recurring import is if I were to run this, if I were to run this import at a later date, 
right? With a, perhaps a different file. So let's say, you know, wherever I get this CSV in a week or two, it gets updated and I want to run the import again, right? But I don't want to update all of the users. I don't want to delete all of my users and import it again. I just want to add the new users that were added, update the ones that have been changed, and then delete the ones that have been removed. And I can do any number, any combination of those things, right? So if I enable this, next time we rerun the import, what's going to happen is any people that were removed, they're going to be removed from the site. They're removed from the file. Up here, if there's a new user added here, when I rerun the import, then we're going to create a new user. Unselect it, not going to happen. And then here, if we detect the existing users already here on the site, what do we do? Well, we can update all of the data or we can just choose which data to update. For example, let's say I, you know, change somebody's uh, email address in here. Well, I can just these unselect everything and then I can select email address. And then no matter what goes on in this file, only the email addresses are going to be updated, right? Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter um, because I'm only going to run this import once. I'm just uploading a CSV and I'm just going to run it so I can kind of ignore these settings, right? If you're interested in recurring imports, check out our documentation, check out our YouTube channel. We have a lot more information on this that goes in detail a little bit more on all of that. Um, okay, so moving right along. Next, we have email notifications for imported users. So when we run this import, we're creating users, right? And WordPress will naturally want to email people the standard welcome email when people register on your site because WPL import is technically just registering all of these users one after another. Right? So to WordPress, it just looks like people are uh, creating accounts. So it wants to email them. But with WPL import, we can block those email notifications during import. Now, why would we, you know, the, the question is, how do we tell the users their password, right? Because we're not importing their password. So WordPress is going to create a default password for them. And then when the import runs, they need some way to log in. You know, or maybe they don't. Maybe I just want to put these users into my site so I can process them in some way in WordPress. And I don't have these users don't actually have to log in. In that case, it doesn't matter. But if I want these people to log in, I have to come up with some way to let them log in, right? So what I would do is you can use a, uh, there's a lot of plugins that do this. They just customize the welcome email, or you can just use the default email that WordPress uses. And it just emails them and gives them a reset URL. So they can just log in and then they can reset their URL, their, their password and create their own new password for themselves in a nice secure manner. So you have a couple options here, but we have some guides on this on our website and our documentation at wpallimport.com. And we have some videos on this as well. So uh, block email notifications during import and importing passwords are pretty interrelated. You're going to want to come up with a strategy for this before you run you know, your import on your site. Maybe run some tests, um, run a test import with like an email address that you control so you can make sure the process works. Um, probably highly recommended to do that. Um, right. But in this case, we're just going to block everything and uh, yeah, continue on down here. We have some scheduling options. So if you wanted to um, run this import on a schedule, in this case, it's not possible, right? Because we're, we're uploading the file. So if we're uploading the file, we can't really run it on a schedule because it's just going to run the same import with the same file again. So what we would do if we wanted to run this on a schedule, we would get a URL for the file. And then in step one, we would import the URL. And then every time we run the import, WPL import is going to download the most up-to-date version of the file and continue and then update the users based on these settings up here. Create new users, update existing users, and remove users that were removed, right? So that's your scheduling options. We have two options for scheduling. You can do this manually with cron jobs um, where you set up cron jobs to run the import, or you can use our scheduling service, which costs $9 a month. And then you just really simply point and click to say when you want the import to run on a daily, monthly, weekly basis, whatever you need. Okay, then we have our advanced settings. So you don't really need to worry about these, but we'll just go through them pretty quickly. Um, import speed optimization. So WPL import is going to import users um, in chunks of 20, right? Um, this is a pretty light import. It's not downloading images. It's not importing products. So it's not going to have a problem. Sometimes if it's very heavy, if it has to do a lot of processing per record and it starts, you know, your server starts getting annoyed that you're running it and starts you know, canceling the, the import process because it's taking too long, you can reduce the records per iteration, right? Um, we can split the import file by default. We do this. We just split it into a thousand record chunks. This is to save processing power on the, uh, on the WordPress server. Um, if you're running into some sort of problems, you can play with the setting and turn it off. Um, you can also 
increase speed by disabling do action calls in w in the wp insert posts during import what this means is okay so every time a user is created on the site wordpress basically announces to all of the other plugins and everything else on the site we just added a new user and then it gives those plugins and all that code an opportunity to do something with it that's what the um that's what this is the wp insert post so you can hook into wp insert post and then do stuff well you know maybe you're site is doing a lot of stuff and it's slowing the import down, or maybe you don't want that stuff to happen. So if you need to, you can disable that over here. And then importing only specified records. So let's say I just wanted to do a test and I can only import, I only want to import, you know, records one through 10, right? And then that's just going to import my first 10 records and I can run a quick test and it'll have to import all 8,000 of these in one go, right? So or if I just, you know, wanted to import just one specific record, like record 153, whatever the case may be. So that's what import only specified records is for. And down here, we have a stream reader instead of XML reader to parse the import file. Um, these are two different ways that WPL import can process the files. In some rare cases, if you're having trouble with your import, you can check it, you can enable this, and it might solve the problems if, you're, if your server has a problem with either stream reader or XML reader, probably does have a problem with both, so... It's mostly a debugging tool. And then we have our friendly name. This is the name that we'll see on the manage imports page. So we can just call this user import. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. That's all of our options. Everything looks good. This is our import summary. Let's go ahead and confirm and run the import. So this is gonna take a little bit. We have about 8,000 records to import. So we will let it run and come back when it's finished. All right, so our import has completed. We have 8,345 records that were imported. So let's check out our users. We're here to all users, open that up. And there it is, here's all our users. And we have 8,346. The extra one is from me, the administrator. All right, so we have all the information here. I have the first name, the last name, their nickname came in as we set it up. Their display name is there. We can change it if we want to but it is by default set up to the one that it should be. Email address, the LinkedIn URL, and their biographical information are all correct. This person is an actuary at Yozio. And scrolling down, then we have our user fields, the company and the job title. Perfect. So that is all it takes to import WordPress users from CSV using WPL import. Check out our YouTube channel, check out our documentation. We have a lot more information on importing users. Um, we also have information on importing everything. So with WPL import, you can import anything. WooCommerce customers if you need to, WooCommerce products, WooCommerce orders. You can import ACF data. Anything you need to do, you can do it with WPL import and WPL export. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.